okay sir mm-hmm. this is the fascia transfer cells the most the fascia transfer cells which is attached to the peritoneum at this time and if you see inside you can see the inferior epigastric artery <coughs> this is the inferior epigastric artery theek this is the scrotum and we have removed the testicle from the scrotum and you can see the spermatic cord coming out of the testicles and this is the superficial inguinal ring through which the spermatic cord is entering okay, it's not entering it is exiting from here and if we go inside and we pull the spermatic cord you can see the pull here and this is the deep inguinal ring <coughs> this one theek ho gaya now from outside and you can see it from inside this is the length of the inguinal canal but we <coughs> see the hazelback triangle in which the lateral boundary is formed by the inferior epigastric vessels here the medial boundary is formed by the rectus abdominis muscle if you put it back this is the rectus abdominis this is the rectus abdominis this is the inferior epigastric vessels and this is the inguinal ligament so this is the hazelback triangle was so this you can see is the liver behind the subcostal margin <coughs> and this green thing is the gallbladder and you can easily see the two lobes of liver this is the left lobe this is the notch and this is the right lobe of liver this here is the stomach to which the greater omentum is attached this is the greater omentum which is hanging like an apron in front of the small intestine if we move this apron upwards we see that this is the transverse colon in my hand this is the transverse colon and this is the stomach okay then you can also see the falciform ligament here this is the falciform ligament which is coming from the anterior abdominal wall towards the liver which is a part of septum transversum in the abdominal line this is the small intestine this complete thing is the small intestine if we pick it up you can easily see the mesentery of small intestine and if we pull it backwards you can see the attachment of the mesentery to the posterior abdominal wall and this shows the root of mesentery from which the two layers of peritoneum are moving from this side and this side and they are coming towards the long small intestine so it is thrown into several folds folds this here you can see this is the spleen this structure is the spleen which was covered by peritoneum and we have removed this peritoneum from the spleen acha <coughs> if we go down we can see this is the kidney which is still retroperitoneal and we have not removed the peritoneum from it this here is the descending colon this is the sigmoid colon and if we pick it up we can see the sigmoid mesocolon here this is the sigmoid mesocolon then we move further this is the sigmoid colon and now it has become the rectum which is a retroperitoneal structure okay this is the rectum this structure at the back is the rectum and this is a retroperitoneal structure this is the urinary bladder and if we remove this you can easily see the recto vesical pouch behind the urinary bladder okay acha pause this thing in my hand is the ileum this thing is the ileum and it is entering the cecum here so this is the ileocecal junction this point is the ileocecal junction and you can see the appendix attached to the lower part of cecum this is the vermiform appendix this structure okay cecum will continue upwards as the ascending colon this structure is the cecum to which the vermiform appendix is attached and if we follow it upwards you can easily see the ascending colon here this is the this structure is the ascending colon okay and it will curve from here in the form of transverse colon and this portion is called the hepatic flexure of colon this or the right colic flexure 